Good evening, everybody. Yes, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it's lovely to see you. And thank you for joining us for this evening, just to remember uh, our founder's great contribution, his extraordinary life. Um, from, from now on, the major kind of uh, celebrations will be every 10 years. So we've got a little time to prepare until the, to the 20th, but uh, still it's nice to do, isn't it? And to, to keep something going. Um, my talk tonight, I'm, I'm calling a champion in eight areas. Uh, actually, our founder, uh, Reverend Sun Yang Moon, he gave a public talk in September of 2007. So maybe it's good fitting with this video that we've just seen, which is rather nostalgic, I must say. It's nice to look back on some of those uh, events, what had just happened in those days was very central and very important. The title of his talk, it's a public talk, it was A Providential View of the Pacific Rim Era in Light of God's Will, the United States and the Future Direction of the United Nations and the World. It's quite a title, eh? <laughs> um, But I'm just going to focus on one part of that speech. In part of it, he described his work for peace, but uh, not in terms of the projects and large you know, events, which we often you know, give recognition to or explain uh, in these kind of programs. Um, but he, he, the content he shared was really, I would say, an appraisal, not of the projects that he inspired, um, uh, but uh, accomplishments of a more internal nature related to the interior life or the spiritual life. And I want to refer to this this evening. It's his own assessment, right? And I'll intersperse his own words with some of my own thoughts or, or comments as well. Um, he begins, uh, distinguished guests, I have surmounted and triumphed over a course of great suffering and tribulation. I have not lived for personal glory or comfort. Even as I, even as I walked that thorny path, often coming very close to death, I received heaven's seal and was made fully aware of the destination of God's will. I held dearly to heaven's command to bring salvation to humanity as I returned like a phoenix and continued my turbulent life. So quite a, a, a lot of that was depicted right in the, in the video, the um, time in a prison in America for Trump tax charges and uh, uh, the kind of reception which grew during that time of uh, kind of welcome home from many key figures in the Christian community in America, very interesting developments, you know, uh, difficulties and persecution, but also great accomplishments at the same time. So um, he said, I have come to be recognized by various leaders of religion, academia, politics, and others, both here in America and throughout the world, as the champion in eight areas of spiritual knowledge and discipline. So it's these areas of spiritual knowledge and discipline that I want to refer to. And this was uh, five years before his passing. So he was looking back on his life, I think, already. Someone might feel that describing yourself as a champion in these areas is perhaps not the most humble of approaches. Right? Um, but I disagree, I think uh, and believe it's the person who is very pure hearted and humble before God who can say such things. Uh, if indeed it is their very real contribution that's recognized by others, and I hope that you take it in the same spirit. He said the first has to do with knowledge of God. He said, until now, God has been known only as the omniscient and omnipotent being. People think God is sitting on the throne of honor and glory as the absolute master, having nothing to do with the created world of all things. However, from the time when I first embarked on a journey 
to fulfill God's providential calling to me, I came to know that the relationship between God and human beings was that of parent and child. I learned that God became the parent of pain, sorrow, and lamentation ever since he lost his first children, Adam and Eve. Throughout my life, I've been doing my very best to dissolve God's pain and sorrow and bring liberation and total freedom to his heart. Personally, I, I, I had never heard anybody speaking in this kind of way, right? Who talks about liberating God? But uh, his understanding was that, you know, love exists in a relationship. And even if you are a parent of a child, if that child is wayward and doesn't give you any attention at all, turns their back on you, then you don't really have a relationship fully as a parent. You can't do your parenting. So this is what he is getting at. And this was his, just his feeling. It comes from his encounter with God and other, other figures. So uh, throughout my life, as he said, I've been doing my very best to dissolve God's pain. The second area has to do with the reality of Satan. Throughout history, human beings did not know the identity of the devil, Satan, who caused the human fall, leading to all kinds of evil. For 14 years, I labored desperately to discover all secrets of the spirit world through many bruising spiritual battles. Finally, I came to find out the real identity of Satan, the origin of all evil, and taking one step further, I also came to uncover Satan's strategy and tactics to multiply his power. Uh, I rather like that. Well, I like is the wrong word, but I'm intrigued by that uh, painting. I came across it. Uh, it's, I think it's Lucifer getting up in the morning or something like that. <laughs> and when I was in the National Art Gallery of Sofia in Bulgaria, I turned a corner and I saw this. And I, it kind of chilled me to the bone, and uh, I knew why when I you know, walked up to it and read the, <laughs> read the title. So um, not the kind of painting I'd want on my living room wall, really, but anyway. He was a person, Father Moon was a person who throughout his life uh, could communicate with the spiritual realm. For him, it was a reality, and he utilized that knowledge and understanding that he gained from that in order to inform his plans and his decisions. But interestingly, I noticed he never used it to attract people to himself and very rarely talked about his own experiences, although surely they were many and varied and very profound. He said, then, after I discovered Satan's strategy of defiling the human blood lineage through the fall, I became totally committed to restoring God's original blood lineage, the heavenly strategy developed for this purpose and now widely known throughout the world is the cross-cultural and international marriage blessing movement. This explains these kind of large uh, marriage events. They certainly worked to capture the world's attention um, but they have a lasting effect as well because families have children and those children have a start in life that makes them naturally embracing of different nationalities and cultures, international peace-loving citizens really of a global uh, nation or a global family. The third area that he mentions as being a champion of is understanding the human condition. Uh, where are human beings from? <clears throat> How should we live? Where should we go? Why are we fighting between the mind and body and struggling in inner conflicts? What's the meaning of life and death? And does the world after death truly exist? If so, how should we live on earth? So these fundamental questions are things that he researched. And he said they're expounded in detail in the principle of creation that was revealed to me by God. I have the intuitive ability, he said, to look into the hearts of men and women and predict their destiny. That's why many young people throughout the world come to me hoping to be matched with an ideal spouse. He was, of course, quite 
famous for that, right? For suggesting uh, a good partner for a person. And uh, I testify to that as well, and especially because my wife is in the room, so I have to, <laughs> have to do that. So the fourth area, the fourth area. Well, uh, maybe I can just show this uh, <clears throat> a little, little more information on this uh, marriage blessing, because as he said there, it's reversing the <clears throat> problem at its root. And uh, here's a, a couple, this is Archbishop uh, Milingo uh, of a Catholic uh, origin, being blessed in marriage to Maria Sung by uh, uh, Father Moon. Here he is uh, giving a marriage blessing to Many, many young couples, it's their wedding day, and there are other couples there at these ceremonies for whom it's like a, a blessing on their marriage, already married couples, such as this. I think this was the largest such kind of physical gathering, uh, August 25th, 1992, 30,000 couples there in the stadium that was built for the uh, Seoul Olympics of 1988. So this is... Uh, <clears throat> wonderful kind of testimony to this a public demonstration of importance of marriage and family. Uh, the fourth area then, I kind of touched on, but he treats it separately here, understanding the spiritual world. It has to do with this knowledge and understanding. The spirit world, the world after physical death, is a world that really exists, he says, and to which all human beings are bound to go as an extension of earthly life. Human life is one continuous stream from conception and life in the womb all the way to an eternal life after physical death ends our earthly life. We should understand clearly that the numerous saints and sages who've lived on earth throughout history are now actually living in the spirit world and they are assisting God's providence. And he began to work uh, to elevate those in the spirit world freeing them from resentments and unresolved attachment to the physical realm uh, on the earth, um, to receive even the marriage blessing there and sort out strife and confusion in that realm. His advice to us is, each moment in our earthly life, as it's recorded in the spirit world, exactly as it takes place, on the day when we go to the spirit world, our life's record will become the basis for judgment. That is why. All human beings should practice a life of true love and sacrifice themselves for a greater cause. That was number four. Number five is uh, to do with uh, uh, knowledge about Jesus in particular and understanding Jesus. And that was his first kind of encounter, if you remember from the film. Uh, at, a, as, at the age of 15, actually, he had this deep personal encounter with the risen Jesus when he was praying uh, all night one Easter morning behind his house. So uh, he said here, uh, I came to grasp the terrible tragedy of the crucifixion of Jesus. He came as God's son, the Savior and Messiah, but he was rejected and opposed even by the people that God had prepared. It was God's will that Jesus, as the second Adam, should fulfill the model of the God-centered ideal family and engraft all humankind to him. Christianity became the foundation of Western civilization through Rome and then became the core for the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean civilizations. It's always stood in the position of the bride to receive the Lord of Second Coming. Therefore, Christians in particular must comprehend the sorrowful heart of Jesus, who was driven to the cross, unable to fully unfold God's will for him. My teachings clearly explain the truth of Jesus' mission, the limitation of salvation through the cross, and the reason and purpose why he should return. So these are quite new and profound insights, actually. And... Um, uh, you know, it might take a while for somebody who's very embedded in traditional uh, view of the life of Jesus to understand or comprehend this. But again, it comes totally from his experience, from his meetings, many meetings with Jesus and his conversations. 
And interestingly, one outcome of this, and we found that through the Middle East Peace Initiative events, which you again saw referred to there, is that um, it somehow removes a lot of uh, traditional obstacles which are there, especially for people of Jewish faith, and also I would say of Islamic faith as well, because uh, to understand or uh, allow the kind of understanding that not everything went as planned is already a big step forward to, to realizing things could have been different and should have been different. So anyhow, the sixth area that he identifies is knowledge of the scriptures. Uh, that means the core contents of the Bible and other religious scriptures as well. Do you remember on the film, um, there was this picture of uh, him at uh, Danbury Prison in America? Um, I, I heard that when he was there, it was a 13-month uh, stay in that uh, correction facility, I think, uh, he read the entire Bible and he read the Holy Quran twice in that time. Interesting, isn't it, right? So he only took two books with him, <laughs> right? Some, some, some reading. And actually, he, I remember that he, he, on arriving, he'd asked the chaplain at the prison if he could use the chapel. Well, and of course, he said, yes. What time do you want to go there? He said, well, three o'clock would suit me. Three in the afternoon? He said, no, no problem. No, no, he said, three in the morning. Right? So he would do that. You know, a person who slept very little, and prayed very much. So um, he says many of the important issues in scripture are described in metaphors and symbols. The meaning of these metaphors and symbols in the Old Testament were disclosed by Jesus. In the same way, the secrets of God regarding his providence of salvation, including the ideal of creation, the fall, and the path of restoration, are now being revealed by my teachings. The divine principle lucidly answers all the questions that are raised in the various scriptures. The seventh area that he identified is the knowledge and understanding uh, of the goal of human history. So history, from his point of view, is not merely a record of events that take place by coincidence or randomly, it's flowing toward a clear direction and purpose. He said, because of this insight into the origin and direction of history, I was able to successfully predict the sudden end of communism and dialectic materialism in a speech delivered at the 1985 Professors World Peace Academy Conference in Geneva, Switzerland, a time when the Soviet Union was still at its peak. Today, I'm declaring that it is time for all nations and religions to break down their barriers, and through this, the era of one world under God will arrive and last forever. I was uh, helping the convener of that conference at the time, uh, and it was bringing together Sovietologists and thinkers and uh, um, you know, uh, professors of politics and all kinds of things of the highest level, everybody who was uh, an expert in Sovietology was coming there. And uh, uh, Father Moon basically said to the, the overall chairman, Morton Kaplan, um, he said, you can do anything you like in this conference, as long as you give it the title, The Fall of the Soviet Empire, right? <laughs> and they all said, no, no, we can't call it that, right? But he insisted, he said, it's fine, you can do whatever you like, but..." That's, that's what it has to be. So I felt through that it was like a strong kind of public declaration, really, that you know, the Soviet Union would collapse from within. And we saw that happen just a few years later, interestingly. So he's saying that you know, that, in a sense, is not just a, on a whim, is absolutely through his deep understanding of the process of history and uh, how God is working in history. Um, the final uh, and the kind of last of these points, which I'll mention tonight, is true family values. 
God's ideal of creation, he said, is to build God-centered true families. It's the goal of his salvation providence to restore the ideal of true family, the ideal that Adam could not fulfill in his own family, and in this way to establish the foundation for the kingdom of heaven on earth and in heaven. The marriage blessing movement that I've been leading is no ordinary wedding ceremony. It's a sacred ritual through which to eradicate the original sin and engraft human beings to the true lineage of God. Two families are the wellspring and foundation of true love, true life, and true lineage. Through true families, the true nation, true world, and true kingdom can be built. And he concluded, as mentioned above, I have become well known as a champion in each of these eight areas. The support of all humanity is urgently needed for everything to be fulfilled. With God's grace, we will soon win the victory. Thank you, Thank you very much. God bless you.